We're here at the, a legend next to me, not only a great friend, but uh, a luminary in the cruise industry, Bob Dickinson. Bob, how are you? So the first uh, edition was in 1995. The second edition was in 2005. The industry continues to change and evolve. And there's, if, if you look at what happens in the resort business over the last 25, 30 years, and the entertainment on board cruise ships rivals that you would find on Broadway, for example. I mean, I'm, I've been on many ships where the shows are as good, if not better, than what I've seen in the first run Broadway shows. Well, we did take a big hit in the 80s when you retired. <laughs> you were an outstanding cruise director. I was, I was. I was on the... Uh, he was a magician. Don't talk about don't. me. <laughs> he was a magician, and he had these peanut WWs. I remember as if yesterday, and the audience would go nuts. Yeah, I mean, you were terrific. Yeah, no, it was a long time ago. The ship, I think it was Noah's Ark. It was a couple of screws, I think. I, I want to say the, uh, the Santa Maria. The Santa, the pin, neither the Santa Maria. One of the, one of the three, yeah, I think I rotated, yeah, but it was a great experience. And we and had to roll between 11 and mid. Yes, and I had to tip the drummer. Yeah. But as a result of this, I, you know, grew up in this industry. We had a chance to meet, and uh, it's amazing what has happened over the years and how cruising has grown so dramatically. And what, what I admire is that, you know, the industry's gone through an awful lot, as, as the whole world has in, in, uh, you know, in the last three years. Uh, but the fact that you grew up in the business that it, it's it's not a business to you, and it's not a career, it's a passion. Right. It shows. I mean, I'm looking at you, I don't know if you can capture this on camera, but <laughs> it's beaming. <laughs> and, and he's, it, this enthusiasm is so infectious. Now, there's no one in the industry now, certainly no one since the pandemic, that has had any sense of being a, a, a global ambassador, if you will, for the industry. You're doing that. You're doing that in space, and it's super natural, natural. So let me ask you, you might not be able to answer. What is your favorite destination to cruise from, and your favorite type of ship? You don't have to mention the cruise line. Well, I I like a variety of cruise lines for a variety of reasons. Um, if I'm going with my wife and I want a foodie experience or a luxury experience, I'll be at a certain deal. If if I if I want to go uh, with other folks in different kinds of itineraries, it may be a different size ship. Sure. Uh, it, it all depends, and, and sometimes it's destination driven. Well, I might want Cruise X, but if it's not in Alaska, when I go, want to go to Alaska, I'm not going to be in Cruise X. But the point is, there are really not any bad cruises at sure. all. The, the, you know, the market, if you know your economics, the market's very uh, efficient. So if people don't make it, the cruise lines don't make it, or they have a bad product, they're gone, or the ships are gone. Right. One of the things that happened in the pandemic, which I don't think anybody's talking about, I don't know, maybe there's some politics or whatever, but the pandemic uh, was an opportunity for a number of cruise lines to shed older tonnage, right? So I think something like a total of 20 or so ships were retired or went to the breakers or went outside of the North American market. That's great for the consumer. Meanwhile, in, during the pandemic, ships are still being delivered. Uh, the, the industry is growing, will carry more people in, in 2023 than we did in 2019 pre-pandemic. But those ships are newer, larger, state-of-the-art. Uh, so overall, it enhances the experience. What is your next cruise? Do you have anything booked in the next couple months? Uh, I do. I'm actually on Viking for 11 days of the night sun cruise. Beautiful. Yeah. Is there any destination that you haven't been that you must go to in the next? Century? I'm really looking forward to the uh, Inside Passage going across Canada. Uh, you know, that's that's something that I haven't done, and I, you know, to come up, go across and go across the top of Alaska, I just think it'd be very neat. I was, uh, Antarctica was one for me that was on my bucket list and I did that last year, yeah, first time. So yeah, I did it uh, 12, 13 years ago. Yeah. A fascinating experience. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, how many penguins can you see it in between the past? <laughs> you had so many. They were saying the same about us. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Bob, it's a, it's a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, for those of you that have. Where we go? Sure, sure. There is one thing I want to point out. You know, uh, in the 70s and in the 80s, I promoted cruising as a way to, uh, from a value standpoint. Sure. Uh, because in that period of time, we had hyperinflation, the early 80s, et cetera. People were very, very cost conscious. And 
And what I said was, it, you know, if you properly equip the land-based based vacation, hotel or sightseeing destination resort, with everything that you had to, uh, that the crews had to offer, you'd pay twice as much. Sure, sure. Now, since the pandemic, with the disruption of the supply chain, uh, with the, la the labor shortage in the domestic market, uh, with the hyperinflation we've had the last three years, now the value of cruising isn't twice as much anymore. So it's three times. It's three times what it's extraordinary. It's a no brace just extraordinary. It's an extraordinary. Bob, what a pleasure, and we've known each other for how many years? It seems like a lifetime. <laughs> My assumption is this audience is raving fans of cruising. Yes. They love cruising. Don't keep it a secret. You have family, you have friends, you have relatives, you have priests, ministers, rabbis, whatever. Let everybody in on it. Don't keep it to yourselves. We just get more ships, bigger ships, more choices. And, and if you really love their, those close friends and family, you're going to encourage them to take a cruise with you. They'll see what they've been missing. They'll thank you for the rest of their lives. Maybe they'll give you a small piece of real estate. Who knows? Do them a favor. There's nothing like cruising. Cruising is in my blood. I live, eat, and sleep it as you do. And uh, Bob, it's all, always a pleasure to uh, chat with you and to share this with uh, all our viewers. I'm Bill Panoff with Porthole Cruise and Travel.